For about the past 15 years, I've used iTunes to manage my music collection. It'll stream to AirPlay devices, has smart playlist support so I can generate playlists based on metadata like play count and skip count, and I've got about 16 gigabytes of music that I've tagged and rated. I've even used smart playlists to build my own shuffle algorithm. In fact, the only thing I dislike about iTunes is that it won't play nicely with hardware from anyone other than Apple. I can't send audio to my cast receivers, and my home automation system can't talk to iTunes. So, in this video, I'll show you how I moved my entire music collection onto its own music server, hosted on a Raspberry Pi, and how I integrated it into Home Assistant, a fantastic open-source home automation solution. Pitter-patter, let's get at her. The first thing we need to do is prepare an SD card with the latest version of Raspbian Stretch. Here I'm using Etcher to burn it to an SD card. Now we'll prepare the SD card by adding an SSH file and a WPA supplicant file. You can find more information in the links in the description. Once it's set up, log in by SSH and run Raspi config, expand the file system, change the host name, set the locale so that you've got the right time zone. And then you're going to want to restart to apply the changes. Log back into the Pi after it reboots, and then run through the update and upgrade procedure. Now we'll run through adding forked DAAPD to our repositories list. Paste this wget command into the command line, and then use nano to edit the sources.list file at this address. We're going to paste in another source here. Copy the address and hold shift and press insert to paste in this address. Use Control X to save the changes, and then run the apt-get update command. Once the update is finished, run sudo apt-get install forked daapd. We need to make a directory so that we can use CIFS to mount a network share and that's where our media files are going to be contained. Once you've installed SIFS, reboot the Pi, and then you'll be able to mount your local media share using username and password and specify version equals 1.0. CD over to the directory to check that it mounted properly, then CD back to the home directory and use sudo nano the etc slash rc.local file. You'll paste in that same mount command so that every time your Pi boots, it will mount your network drive again. Now, if you're using the defaults like in this example, you can just use system control to restart fork DAAPD and then use this tail command to view the log file as it boots. Once it's finished booting, use a browser to visit the IP address of the Pi colon 3689 to open port 3689. Now you've got fork DAAPD running on your Raspberry Pi. So what is forked DAAPD? Well, it's a Linux-based music server that's designed to run headless on a Raspberry Pi. That means it will just sit on our network, waiting to be told what we want to hear and where we want to hear it. So far, so good? Just like iTunes. Now let's look at the differences. For starters, I've got a lot of different audio receivers in my home. Some are connected to AirPlay receivers, other to Google Cast receivers, and still others are connected to Raspberry Pi Zeros or computers running SharePort, which emulates an AirPlay receiver. 
Fork DAAPD can send music to any or all of these. Next, Fork DAAPD has an API, or an application programming interface, which means that it'll talk to other systems. So let's get cracking hooking up to Home Assistant, a free and open source home automation platform that runs on Raspberry Pi. I'm not going to cover installing Home Assistant in this video. I'm just going to assume that you've already set it up. To get started, we'll go over to our network and connect to our config folder and open up our configuration.yaml in an editor. I like Atom. Now we're going to set up our media.yaml file just like we've got listed in the example documentation. I want to get the IDs of the outputs, so I'll use Postman to get the API outputs listed, and then I'll add them to the switches.yaml file. I know that I'm going to have a lot of reuse of a whole set of parameters in my YAML file, so I'll set them up as a set of defined parameters, which I can reuse for later entries. This configuration entry tells Home Assistant how to interact with each of the defined speaker outputs that we got back from our call using Postman. And we'll use some script tags to evaluate the state of the speakers from the REST API calls made by Home Assistant. Now that we have one speaker entry defined, all we need to do is duplicate our efforts for each speaker ID that we got back from our API. Paste in the unique ID, change the name, and then we can inject those same parameters again and do it for every single set of speakers that you have. Now that Home Assistant can turn our speakers on and off, we need a way to change the volume, and for that we'll use some input numbers. And again, we're going to copy and paste it for each set of speakers that we had to find. Now we need to tell Home Assistant how to format the information that it will send to the API of our media server in order to change the volume. And we'll use a script tag to extract the value of those input numbers that we defined in that earlier step. And once more, you've got to do it for every set of speakers that you want to be able to control via Home Assistant. Now we need Home Assistant to understand how to check the state. So we'll set up some REST sensors that will check the volume level for each of the speakers. This sensor will call our media server every five seconds to check the state and the volume level of each speaker that we have set up. Once more, do it for every set of speakers that you want to configure. Finally, let's create some automations that will allow us to tell Home Assistant that anytime we change an input number slider, we want it to tell our media server to change the volume level. And again, we're going to use some tags to extract the value of those input number sliders in order to send that value to the music server. Do it again for every single set of speakers that you've got. Now that we have the backend configuration done, we need to add an entry to our Lovelace file to allow us to control our media server. We can get started by using the media control card in Lovelace, and that gives us some default actions. Pick a song and start playing it using the web interface of your media server and then take a look at Home Assistant and you'll see the title and the state change. But the best part about Lovelace is its responsiveness. So let's use a conditional card that will allow us to control the speaker volume and position but only if our media server is actually playing music. And one more time, we've got to do it for every single speaker we want to control. Save the changes, and then reload the interface so that we've got the latest version. 
Now when we hit play, we'll see our list of speakers appear. We can adjust the volume of individual speakers or toggle them on and off from Home Assistant. Now that we've got our media server up and running, let's connect to it from our phone. I'm using an Android phone, so I'll use the app called Retune. On an iPhone, you can use the Apple Remote app. So from within the app, I'll click on Add Library. And now I have to go to the web interface of Forked DAAPD and open the Admin Settings. You can see I've now got a remote pairing request, and I can enter the code here, 7579. Now you can see I'm connected to my media server. I can look at my playlists. I can even select speakers. and I can control my server from here. That's it. We've finished setting up Forked DAAPD, a fully featured music server that's now integrated in the Home Assistant. It may look like not much has changed, but now I don't need to leave my PC running all the time just in case I want to listen to some music. I've still got full access to all my metadata because Forked DAAPD can import all my info from iTunes without hassle. And because it's integrated with, into Home Assistant, I can now use my Google Home to turn speakers on and off in various rooms. And don't think that just because it's running forked DAAPD, your Raspberry Pi can't do anything else. I'm also running Plex Media Server, which is a media server for video rather than audio. You could even run your own version of Google Home on the same Raspberry Pi if you want to. Serving music all around your home is just the beginning. Thanks for watching.